Today, I have begun to pour out my wrath upon that church and the Wasatch Front. Within two months, it will be desolate. Okay. One month from today, okay. my power will right. again return for the third time to the Wasatch Front. On that day, those that have mocked my servant Jesse will mourn and the inhabitants of the earth will know that he has been sent by me to prepare the world for my return. Only then will he allow me to sacrifice my life unto him. Great. I love when religion involves some type of suicide pact. Hey everybody, go ahead and just gather on in here. Just sit yourself down. Get some popcorn and a barf bag. I I don't know who you are. I don't know if you know who I am. We are going to both be here for a while together because what I have to show you is something that you're going to want to see. This is Mormons, ex-Mormons, anybody who uh, wants to watch a uh, possible doomsday or doomsdaying right before our eyes right now, come on in and get comfy. Take a seat. For one, we are watching a very... Chad Daybell like man upload videos to YouTube right now. And uh, let me tell you, I was not planning on making a video tonight, but a follower of mine just sent me this and they said, trigger warning. Oh, shouldn't have said this so late. And I said, many, many expletives after watching it, my stomach dropped. There's a Mormon man on YouTube. And I have been saying that we're watching the Mormon doomsdayers doomsdaying right now before us. And this video was uploaded just earlier today. So there have been so many cases over, especially just this last year, last couple of years of uh, Chad Daybell, Lori Vallow, this visions of glory, Tim Ballard, this traditionalist view of Mormonism, that Mormon family from Arizona that I reported on maybe two weeks ago now that took that 16 year old boy and kind of kidnapped him away from his dad and said, we're selling everything and we're going up to Alaska. And we have a special mission that we need to teach our son and help usher in the second coming. So as you may know, there's been a lot of doomsdayers doomsdaying, uh, but this specific channel could be something that we are watching unfold right before our eyes that we could hear about on the news tomorrow, for instance. So uh, no cute intros from me. I just really want to barf right now. But anyway, hit it. I went to check my Instagram and planned to go to bed. I couldn't sleep, wondering how many you did. The message said, trigger, warning, and good luck. I replied, oh my God, I want to vomit, Jesus, holy fuck. So if you head right on over to Joseph Told the Truth YouTube channel, 1.23 thousand subscribers, five videos a show dedicated to bringing you to Christ by defending the reputation, teachings, and revelations given to us through his anointed servant, Joseph Smith, as well as defending the sacred and eternal relationship with our heavenly parents. Now, after watching this first video, this poison of Nauvoo uh, manifesto given from his car that was uploaded 20 hours ago, I took a second and I paused and I said, what's your story, dude? How did we get here? And his story is very thoroughly laid out in the videos previous. Then maybe we can go back through his other videos because anyone who kind of like claims to speak on behalf of God, it's not usually like, hey, this is my manifesto just sitting in my car from my bunker. There's usually been like a paper trail. It's just weird to be in a technological age where the paper trail are like publicly viewed YouTube videos that we can react to. But I don't want to keep you waiting. We're just going to go straight for the stomach dropping to the floor. All right, take us away. I'm publishing this video Monday morning, November 13th at 5 a.m. Um, for many of you, this is going to be the most important message that, uh, that you'll ever, ever hear. And I've been required to sacrifice all I love to bring it to you. Again, I didn't know who this man was a couple hours ago, but I have done some research. There's going to be symbolism I want to be pointing out to uh, people who might not be as perceptive as I. Right here, we have a man in a very, I'm going to call it manifesto chic. He's got a hoodie, some like heavy winter kind of jacket on, and a truck appears to be the color red. 
out somewhere on a dirt road up in the woods. I don't know if this is just his backyard, but it is giving strong. This is where the bodies are buried energy. I didn't know anything about his YouTube channel or his beliefs, but I know a lot about this doomsday prepper movement, this traditionalist narrative of Mormons who reject ideas that Joseph Smith was a polygamist. They think that Brigham Young was a fallen prophet and that a lot of them also believe that the church is completely gone astray, that the prophet of the church, uh, President Nelson, is a fallen prophet and their definite signs. Here, and I've been required to sacrifice all I love to bring it to you. I don't like the way that sounded. The fear of God is about to sweep the earth. Um, today, the financial markets will begin their collapse. The Lord has shown me this sign in order to get your attention for a message that he needs me to deliver to the world. Today marks the beginning of tribulation. What has been lost today will never be returned. The Lord is not going to stop until he has taken half of the world's wealth back unto himself. God, if you are watching this and planning on taking half of the world's income, please do not touch my bank account. I am really on a tight budget right now. Everything that men's hearts are set upon other than him, he's going to start taking. The world will learn what tribulation means and why every knee and every tongue will confess that Jesus is the Christ. Today, the Lord has sent forth a sign that only I knew in order to justify this message and my witness here today. I am literally on the edge of my seat and on the rim of my barf bag. The collapse that is happening is the sign for this message. And the name of this sign is this. If riches increase, set not your heart upon them. That is the name of the sign. Any Latter-day Saint that has ever been through a temple now knows that I am a true servant of the Lord sent forth with a message and an accompanying sign, name and sign. Please do not ignore the first warning from the Lord to all Latter-day Saints. I've been through the temple before. What did you say? If riches increase, set not your heart upon them. That is the name of the sign. All right, I haven't heard that one. I have not heard the set not your hearts upon the riches increase you sound like a real commie there bud set not your heart upon the riches increase that is the sign he is a true messenger from god if you've been through the temple you will know i don't know it sounds like you're a messenger more from like i don't know Karl marx if you have a child on a mission right now you need to bring them home right now bring your missionaries home i like your style so far based of God and the terror of the Lord is about to be brought to the masses. If you haven't watched any of the videos in this series, please consider them watching them after this. I have sacrificed my life to get them to you. In the Book of Mormon, you'll find two types of authorized messages from the Lord. The first type is the one that brings forth further light and knowledge. These are delivered during relatively calm times to a righteous people by a prophet that is seeking, seeking to elevate them closer to the Lord. If you don't have righteousness among a people, though, the Lord reverts back to truth to gather out people again. Authorized truth messengers are the crazy guys in the Book of Mormon, the Lehi's, the Abinadi's, and my favorite, the Samuel's. These bold messengers were sent forth by the Lord to declare dangerous truths to the wicked straight to the just some straight up critical thinking sorry for interrupting i understand that you have this really really special holy book i used to believe in it too it's a real page turner when you're not falling asleep to it i understand that you are really big on this book of mormon thing i'm just wondering if you're taking it a little bit too far and uh, some of us are just a little bit concerned for you for instance there are many different people break off sects of Mormonism, starting after the death of Joseph Smith and the church having many different break off sects. And today, there are many different people who claim to be as the exact thing that you are proclaiming right now that you are. So, how do we know the difference between those other Mormon break off sect prophets who also proclaimed that they are the ones who are there to speak the truth, but then also go and do heinous things? Many different Mormons prophesy a lot of different things that they have an inside scoop on what God wants. I'm obviously just asking you some critical thinking questions that will go in one ear, out the other. 
long enough to stall you so that the FBI can be sent to your location. To their faces, messages filled with warnings of the coming destruction and always ending with cries for repentance. These two are authorized by the Lord. Before the Lord. Super fun God you got there. Super fun. God is so crazy. Crazy, crazy God. The Lord can destroy a people. He has always promised to warn them first. He always sends truth out to lead people back to righteousness if they will follow him. Servants assigned to deliver truth are bold, brash men with big hearts. I'm going to vomit. Men that are happy to live out in the woods or in a cave. Servants assigned to deliver righteousness are usually well-educated, thoughtful, and diligent. Joseph was a further light and knowledge servant and restored as much as he could. Joseph Smith did not have an accompanying prophet to help gather out people, though. Mm -hmm. The reason why he didn't have a bold servant helper was because this nation was a righteous, God-fearing nation. Was He only... Yes, at the time of the Restoration... 1820, 1830, the United States of America is famously a God-fearing nation, super God-fearing. They were just like, God, do not bring your wrath down upon me or my slaves or my cotton fields. In the scriptures and revelations through the prophet Joseph Smith, in the last days, there's three individuals that have been called to lay down their lives for the Lord. Two of them are in old Jerusalem, but one of them is here in new Jerusalem. That man is found in DNC section. Eight. I thought it was going to name somebody like more modern. He was going to be like, that man is found in a Cabela's. When I read that scripture and learned about this servant, this last day's servant for the first time ever, just a few months ago, I might have cried for a while for I knew I might, I might be that man. Hmm. And God might be waiting for me to get some things done. Hmm. Mm -mm. So I settled myself down and I began to work in faith. I knew I had to climb this wall here on YouTube and start punching the wicked in the face with dangerous truths. Todd, 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 Todd. The only truth between me, the wicked, and you, the only truth here is that you have beautiful blue eyes. You sure do, kid. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to put down that manifesto? Do you want to go ahead and put that down? Come on inside. I can warm you up a cup of non-caffeinated hot beverage. Yeah, that sounds nice, huh? That sounds nice. I knew I had to start declaring repentance and warning people of what's coming. And so I did. And since then, I've slept with a loaded gun on my nightstand. Yeah. Waiting like for that. the consequences mm -hmm. of my words. I don't like that so much. I'm not a big fan. I'm not a big fan of that. Mm -mm. I'm listening with a loaded gun on the nightstand because uh, everyone's out to get you. Oh, man. The 1.23 thousand YouTube subscribers do not even know the truth that Todd is dishing out over here. Oh, he is hiding out for dear life. You fancy me more as a man who could really do a lot with like a bear trap or, you know, something in the woods where you put leaves down and there's a tarp and you lead people to it and they fall into a pit and then you get to just stand there above them while they try to get out. They can listen to your manifesto and uh, in that time we can keep stalling you so that the FBI can be sent to your location. I have proven to the Lord that I will die for him in order to bring people his truth. On August 3rd, I delivered a message to the world that declared to the that declared that the Book of Mormon was warning us about the LDS Church. I mean, in so many respects, he's really on point. The Mormon Church is corrupt. It's led by a false prophet. Todd, say less. No, actually, please say less. Take this down. On September 11th, I warned the world that Russell Nelson was a false prophet. I proved it, and I bore a witness against him. The power of God was again on display as he was struck down that same day. But after seeing these two signs... Todd, I know, again, you're not interested in critical thinking, but I strike down Russell M. Nelson every day. But I will be gracious. I will share this one with you. It sounds like you're going through a really hard time and that you need this ego boost. We'll distribute partial credit between you, me, and gravity. Because I would do exactly the way, I would do it exactly the way he wanted it done. 
and he knew my heart was pure and he knew it at the end of the day, I only wanted to help people find what I have found because he knew I was willing to sacrifice both my life for him and the adoration for him. I think the adoration is either the name of the drug that he's going to have to give up. I hope it's not the name of one of his kids. Shown me exactly how to do this that ensures no one will ever praise me or thank me and that all of that praise will go to him. Don't thank Todd. Thank Jesus Christ for sending Todd. Message over and out. Please continue by telling us how you are the one true messenger. By accepting these terms, I have now become chosen by him. The Lord now has a bold truth servant to go gather out believers and to lead them to his further light and knowledge servant. Both have now been chosen by the Lord to bring about New Jerusalem. That really sucks that you don't have a bigger YouTube following. If you told me that Miss Rachel or Elise Myers was the chosen prophet, I'd be like, yeah, that makes sense. They have a gigantic following. They can get the word out. With uh, one 1,000 subscribers, it just seems to me like most of those people are friends that you met at the shovel store. The Lord is now prepared for his return to earth. He is now preparing to begin his millennial reign here with his chosen and gathered people. Finally. And he has asked me to declare to the world that Zion has come. Zion has come. Zion has come. That right now, as you prepare to join me and my loved ones there, it's simple. And if you do it with a pure heart, we are going to have a lot more witnesses very soon. This is the key. First, a real sacrifice that you can make to show him how much you love him and want to be with him in the last days. Each of us have that one sacrifice in us that we know we are not ready to make. You know, I hate being called out like this, but um, there is absolutely a sacrifice that I am having difficulty making. Let me go ahead and take my trash can and put this vape inside of it. I, I read you loud and clear, Jesus. All right. First sign, done. There are only three men being required to sacrifice their lives to the Lord. No one. Yes. <laughs> Vagina off the hook. Else is required to lay down their lives for him. Second is how you offer it up unto him in a way that ensures no one praises you. There Guys, do not praise me. Nicotine is the stupidest thing in the entire world. Of course you all grow up and you're like, cigarettes, ew, gross. But then you're at a party and somebody is like, oh, yeah, I, I, okay, yeah, I'll see what the bad thing's about. Never, ever try it. Don't praise me for giving up this and sacrificing this. I should have never started in the first place. I'm a stupid person. Don't thank me for this PSA even. It is just part of my nature as a very godly woman. There are ways for every great offering unto the Lord for them to go unnoticed. Offerings with no faces or names attached are the offerings that open up the gates to an audience with your Savior. And only he will know if it is the ultimate sacrifice that you are making up unto him. Mm. Um, this scrunchie was a gift from my late grandmother. It means the world to me. I wear it on my wrist and put my hair back in a ponytail and... Even when I'm like flirty and have it down, I'm always thinking of my dead grandmother and how much she sacrificed. But what good will hair be in the great day of burning? Go ahead. Jesus, take it. The sacrifice I'm being required to make is to cut myself off from all adoration from the world. That is done by leaving all that you love completely taking what you need to survive and what you need to minister and nothing else. Truly cutting yourself off from the world, even from your kids, for they can be a channel to you of the gratitude of the faithful. You've heard of deadbeat dads, but have you heard of deadbeat prophets? How do you expect to be a prophet, Todd, if you don't follow in the wisdom of TLC? Having a shorty that you don't show love? Hmm. That doesn't make you a prophet. It makes you a scrub. 
No, 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 we don't want no scrubs. I think you missed the true profits all along. T-Boz, Chili, and Lisa Left Eye Lopez. Delivering the messages the Lord needs you to, and then moving on to the next, next task, getting your five yards at a time. The next time I will see anyone that I love will be in Zion. I don't know when you're talking metaphor, and I don't know when you're talking serious, crazy lunatic talk. There's like, punch evil in the face, metaphorically speaking. What I mean by that is, carry a gun on my nightstand, or like, uh, establish this Zion. I'll meet you in Zion, which is like a metaphor for a type of utopia that we build, but it's actually made of bones. The Lord has allowed me to prepare my children for this as much as I could. And because they are being forced to sacrifice their father for the Lord, he will share in the glory with them. He knows how pure each one of them is. Each one of them are? Sorry, I don't mean to nitpick. Not every crazed Mormon lunatic on a doomsday mission can have an editor go over their manifesto. The Lord is now waiting on the bold truth servant and the further light knowledge servant for... Stunning blue eyes, Todd. Just stunning. Old Jerusalem, who have now learned the key to unlock the gates in order to ascend to be his chosen servants over there. And once both of them hold that key, the Lord will begin to work. The Lord will begin his work in old Jerusalem. Go get your witnesses, brethren. Sacrifice everything. No half measures. No half measures. Tell your kids you're never coming back. That as far as they know, daddy is dead to them. If you want to ascend to the top of the ladder, if you want that key, show him. There are two ways people can sacrifice for Zion. Uh, I haven't played video games in a while, but is anyone else getting like some strong, like, I don't know, Zelda vibes, like some just some general like NPC vibes of like, you're going on a quest. It's like, yeah, I know. I've already beat this game before. Get out of my way. But we spent a lot of money hiring voice actors for this script. I know I need to find the key to go on the quest. Let me through the passage. One is for the current covenant believers and the other is for the new believers that want to be a part of the gathering. For the covenant believers, anonymous donations should be made, should be sent to the trust fund of righteousness. No, actually, this is a serious thing. The trust fund of righteousness, it's a real place to donate. It's a real link. It's actually in my description right now. It's labeled Venmo at Caribbean. By ascending this ladder, the Lord has given me my new name that he will use in referring to me. That new name is Jesse. FBI, other possible aliases he goes by are Jesse. Today I have begun my ministry for the Lord as the one sent forth to recover the lost records of our fathers and as the gathering angel for Zion. I will lead the pure in heart out unto that city that my servant's son, David, will organize and construct. The Lord Isn't it so fun when doomsday brings the whole family together? Lord wants me to warn the world that I have his protection and will until the gathering has concluded and all are safe in Zion. Only then will he allow me to sacrifice my life unto him. Great. Okay. The so there we go. A blood oath with Jehovah that only exists in your mind. The Lord wants me to warn the world that I have his protection and will until the gathering has concluded. And all are safe and why are the gun? Why the gun is my question. If God is in your pocket, Zion, only then will he allow me to sacrifice my life unto him. Great, 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 great. That's all I was wondering. Super duper. I love when God has blood oaths with his prophets that only exist in their head. Hey, this is a doomsday cult. I love when religion involves some type of suicide pact. I really, it's like, sit down. There are 15,000 people making manifestos right now saying that they are God's chosen prophet, servant from God, who God also told to leave his family, take up a gun, build a temple, collect some money, and then he, they're going to end up dying. And that's just fulfillment of prophecy. It works every time it's tried. To those that have rejected truth, when it came to you in these videos, 
your rejection and your comments to me and God have now been gathered and, and taken up into heaven to be recorded. Those that rejoice publicly when the word came among you, your rejoicings have also been recorded in heaven and more blessed are you. These things have now been revealed to the earth for the first time and need to be added to the archives. I will place a link to the transcript in the description of this video. There's a transcript to the archives of all of the evil doing I have done to say against you and the Lord. Well, well, shit, Jesse, you gotta warn me. I am like such a fuck up on this kind of stuff, but I thought that there'd be like a day of repentance. You're telling me that all of this has been recorded. I mean, it's on my YouTube channel, but there is an archive that you have a transcript to. Let me replay that again. Oh, shit. I actually love Joseph. See, I keep him right here on my on my bookshelf right here. Mm, mm, mm. I'd love to be your second wife, Joseph. It'd be so nice to be. Oh, wait, he doesn't believe that Joseph Smith practiced polygamy. Sorry, that was just Brigham Young. Joseph, thanks for treating your only beloved wife, Emma, with so much dignity and respect. Mm, sure, I'm jealous of her, but you're the prophet of the restoration who didn't practice polygamy at all. That's how we know you're not a fallen prophet like that other guy over there on the other bookend. That old pervert, not like you, Joseph. Mm. That should do it. Back on God's good books. You will need to bring resources for yourself and loved ones. Food storage will be essential for the first invited guests as well as shelter. Each family will be required to build their own homes, so you will need something to live, something to live in during that time. All right, I'm just spitballing here. I could use a vacation away from this old rat race. Well, Jesse, I am sold hanging out with a bunch of doomsday Mormons, their weapons, eating food storage in the cold wilderness, talking about Joseph Smith and getting away from our kids. <laughs> Are you asking me to go on a camping weekend with you? I accept. Nauvoo was a once great, was a great city built by humble followers of Christ that worked together, stumbling a little bit, but they kept going and got it to the point that it was not only built, but it was beautiful. Sadly, though, over time, pride and sin, sin. Navu means beautiful. City of Joseph, city beautiful, city of Joseph, Navu. They had to endure all the backbiting and arrogance of so many that thought mm. they were God's chosen people. Yep. But they didn't find God's chosen people. They found a self-chosen and a self-assured people. Navu turned a help so so different so so different from what I see here very clear distinction between them and you because he knows your hearts are good and because of how merciful and grateful he is for all of the sacrifices unto him for these many over these many years he is offering you one last chance to try again and he's going to give you six months until the April 2024 solar eclipse to pull this off. Many of you have repeatedly ignored the multiple cries of repentance to prepare spiritually and Sorry, physically for years. And this day has come and there's no fellowships ready, but maybe one or two. Very few are ready to be gathered right now. Of course I'm not ready. I just got out of bed and put on a tank top. I'm freezing. Don't worry, I've already got the guns is is not appropriate for children and only for adults i have to say is is not appropriate for children and only for adults in addition to what i have been shown in the financial sector happening today the lord has also shown me the following today the lds church will announce the abomination that will lead to desolation hmm. Fun. only a few heard it in my last message but i prophesied a month ago of something that was coming to the wasatch front I have seen a great and terrible event that will soon be here. The cost of ski lift tickets, am I right? What an abomination. Now hear the voice of the Lord. For my first great act of tribulation, I am going to destroy a once great city. A city filled with good people, many who love me, okay. many who have sacrificed all in service to me. This is how that you know that he's lying because there has never been a once great city in Utah. Had given more opportunity to and more truth to than any other. A city founded on faith and sacrificed 
offered up unto me by their believing ancestors, a city that foolishly thought their abundance and prosperity was because of them and not because of those who once sacrificed for me. You were not chosen by me. Your ancestors were. Mm. The prosperity you've enjoyed was because of them. I gave you everything, and all I wanted in return was humility and gratitude. I gave you more truth, and all you needed was to come unto me. I gave you the Book of Mormon, filled with my doctrine and the teachings of my prophets, who sacrificed their lives in order to teach their descendants the truth. And it was so crazy when I mixed up big time and put that whole thing about the Trinitarian view in the Book of Mormon, this totally most correct book of any book that's ever been written, keystone of the entire religion with so many major doctrinal changes as Joseph Smith's theology writing Mormonism went on. I gave you guys that truth that was also subjective to what Joseph Smith's influences were. And look at you guys now. You were supposed to take my restored gospel back to my people. It was a gift to you, but it was never for you. My people will soon have my gospel because of the sacrifice of a few who've trusted and acted upon my words. A few that have read my words and believed on them and acted in faith. Because of their sacrifice to fulfill these last day's prophecies and bring back my return, they will receive my protection in the days ahead as I begin to pour my wrath out upon the great and abominable Gentile church that I warned the inhabitants of the world about in the Book of Mormon. The church Latter-day Saints worshipped instead of me. Today I have begun to pour out my wrath upon that church and the Wasatch Front. Within two months, it will be desolate. I will show the world that I am God. I will show unto the world what is coming to the wicked if they don't repent. I will show unto the world what is coming if they reject my servant Jesse and his warnings and the accompanying signs that have been sent down from my people to save them. Okay. Okay. One month from today, okay. my power will right. again return for the third time to the Wasatch Front. Right. On that day, those that have mocked my servant Jesse will mourn and the inhabitants of the earth will know that he has been sent by me to prepare the world for my return. My covenant people, heed his instructions and get my people out now. Tribulation will sweep through this world and gather out my people. Repent, all inhabitants of the earth. Repent and come unto me. The Lord has instructed me to warn the entire Wasatch Front again. That one month from today, truth and, righteous, truth and righteousness will sweep through the Wasatch Front. Truth from the north and righteousness from the south. The Lord has asked me to deliver several instructions to his people. Please heed them. All covenant men and available women need to mobilize and make arrangements immediately to descend on the Wasatch Front to help with the evacuation of our covenant brothers and sisters. Mm. These covenant brothers and sisters, except for David and his family, need to be evacuated up to Boise, and their last day supplies need to be evacuated and stored at our properties in southern Idaho, Cache Valley, and Hennifer. This evacuation of our brothers and sisters is now the priority of all covenant believers. Got it. All things in common starts now. It's all written down. Work together to organize a list of all believers along the Wasatch Front. Divide them by county from Tremonton down to Nephi. Separate into large groups that will go to our people's homes. Living essentials need to be evacuated up to Boise. Last day supplies need to go to be stored at our properties at the above mentioned locations that are closer and will be, and will be safe from what's coming. Got it. Work together in humility to systematically get our people out of here. Take only what we need. Our homes and land will be protected if you act in faith now. Work together and follow my instructions. All of our properties will be protected. You will be able to return for personal items later. All of your non-covenant believing family will be destroyed. But come back for your personal items. Those will be safe and intact. God would never destroy your 
Scrapbook scissors. Catch front, stock up on bottled water immediately and begin preparing your homes for what you need to take with you. Leave everything else. Buy as many fuel containers as you can and fill them with diesel and unleaded. Fill up all of your vehicles as well. The Lord's people will be traveling in convoys and will only be stopping together at rest stops to refill with our own fuel. Do not rely on fuel stations being available. Our convoys need to be heading straight to where they're going, unload, and return with more fuel ready to get more people and supplies out. There will be a run on fuel shortly. The advantage will be with the Lord's faithful that have been preparing for years for this day. The Lord has asked me to say this as well. Roland Goodrich and Lori Larson of the Covenant Body, because of your faith and humility, and because of the many prayers that have been offered up on your behalf, the Lord has healed you today. Stop treatments immediately and begin to labor and prepare with your brothers and sisters for this evacuation. If he just told somebody in his family, come on down, you've been chosen to be healed by cancer through faith. It's also going to be a problem. You can't really load up on chemotherapy and put those in fuel containers. Uh, to all to the saints that have non-believing spouses and must remain behind, mm. you and your family will be protected. Mm. Prepare yourselves and our people will return for you. Good to know I can still uh, recline in the lazy boy, uh, watch football, drive my truck around with all the gas that I want. Uh, but the old bitch of a non-believing spouse, the old ball and chain is keeping me so I can't go on your doomsday mission with you. But good to know that I still get a cushy spot in heaven with you. Right on, brother. To the sweet mother of my children, I am sorry about this. I truly am. The Lord, the Lord has promised me that you and your husband and all of our children will be safe. You can stay here or head north to Tim and Ann. I was making funny deadbeat dad jokes. It does seem to me that his wife has divorced him, remarried, and he is a little bit of cuckoo for cuckoo puffs. <laughs> and his kids are like, in my mind, I was like, daddy, don't go. But it's like, mm, we want sane daddy, sane daddy, sane daddy. And he's like, well, I'm going to go be a prophet in the woods then. And you'll be sorry that you ever chose sane daddy. And Angie. Because of your pure heart and this sacrifice you are being required to make for me, you and your loved ones will also have the Lord's protection until you are safely gathered into Zion. I love you guys. And I am sorry about all this. I wish there was another way. Oh, righteous. I wish that I was less faithful. <laughs> this is just so hard being God's chosen person. I wish there was like, uh, God's chosen person anonymous where we could all get together and I'll say, hi, my name is Jesse. I've been the chosen one for one month now. Hi, Jesse. Jesse, do you need a sponsor? Is I can tell this is not your first I'm a prophet weekend bender. People are concerned about you. Get some help. I have asked the Lord for this. And he has agreed. He has agreed. Those choosing to hunker down with plans of riding out the storm. This is not the only biblical event that is coming to this valley. No one will ever live in this valley again. Shit. He wants the world to know oh, that shit. the Book of Mormon is true. And he's going to prove it to them right now. Well, shit, Jesse. Shit. I am a homeowner. Do you understand how difficult it will be to relocate Interest rates are at their all-time high right now. This is really inconvenient news. To the world watching, the Book of Mormon warned us about the LDS church. Mm. It warned us about their pride, right. their arrogance, their wealth, and many more things. I'm looking at your math test here, Jesse, and funny thing is the answer is correct, but the formula and the work that you did to get there is not correct. Soon many will not be showing up for work. Soon looters will descend upon the city to find empty homes. And soon convoys of believers will, will be seen on freeways. Which It's just going to be mass hysteria. You guys are going to say, oh, 
It's just like Jesse predicted. There's going to be so many people on the freeway. Is there a football game? Is there an apocalypse? Where's everybody going? They're going to Jesse's house in Boise, Idaho. It will only lead to more convoys as people will begin to trust the Lord's warning. God knows how to turn a city desolate, and he's about to show the world. Sadly, thousands will... Sorry, I literally have to. I cannot resist. <laughs> Everything is telling me to stop, but I cannot. City of desolate, city of destruction, city of desolate, Salt Lake. ...will perish because they refuse to heed these warnings. The Lord will listen. The world will listen now as God's wrath is poured out upon the prideful Latter-day Saints that have rejected a true messenger sent forth to warn them. No one will ever live in this valley again because of the wickedness of the LDS Church. Mm. God hates pride. He hates pride. All pride and he's going to show the world how much i have to return and report to the lord but i will be back with more instructions for his people well hmm. what do you guys want to watch now mormon influence on chad and Lori daybell how I became a cult expert just so much learning and things we can do in between the time that he comes back and gives us the rest of the information that we need to know well jesse i know what you're thinking <laughs> Yeah, they all laughed when Noah was building the boat, but were they laughing when they saw the rain? <laughs> I know what you're thinking. That and also how to probably kill me. Now, let me dissuade you from the latter. So what do you think the verdict is, guys? Did he give us the correct signs? You guys know them. You guys went through the temple. Did he do anything to tell us that he is the correct, true prophet to usher in the second coming of Jesus Christ? I don't know. I just didn't see it from his first performance, but it was a little bit pitchy, a little lack stage presence. Um, I just think that he needs a little bit more time in the studio to rehearse. Uh, he seemed a little bit nervous, um, but you know, I guess ultimately the voters of America will decide. And uh, viewers out there, you can actually call in and vote for your favorite doomsday apocalyptic Mormon. Todd over here, he's the Mary Roach of the doomsday idol. He's the one who's like, you just don't see it, but it's not the doomsday idol that he's going to be. It's going to be in the memes that are created from the doomsday idol. He's already changed his name to Jesse when he makes it to Boise, Idaho, because it has more of a star quality. That's right. J-E-S-S-E. Any major catastrophes along the Wasatch Front? Again, Jesse has these ideas that I could get into in a second episode about how we know that the LDS Church has fallen. And um, I actually kind of like it. I kind of like, I see where he's going on certain things. I see, oh, mm, very true. Very, very observant, thy servant of God. We know that the church has fallen because the angel Moroni fell off the top of the Salt Lake Temple a few years ago. How could that not be a sign of God? That's how God lets you know his church has fallen, not by an entire institution that doesn't allow background checks for people working with children and hides sex abuse inside of its clergy members. No, no, that is part and parcel of just being part of a true church. <laughs> It's when the angel Moroni falls off the temple for natural causes. Mm, 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 mm. Well, please let me know if you want me to do a part two on this. Please, please, please do all that you can to donate to help keep this channel sustainable. My links are below. I will keep a close eye on this. I hope that you will as well. And of course, I'm talking to the Federal Bureau of Investigation. All right. Well, that is today's show. I have a bunch of more episodes coming out this week. All right, I'm going to call that my very belated Halloween episode. Very spooky. Spooky, spooky indeed. All right, that's it for me. Love you so much. Bye.